Hey brothers and sisters! Welcome to the CFC Servant in Light Podcast. My name is Mac Quinto. Tara, kwentuhan tayo. Hey brothers and sisters! Welcome back to the CFC Servant in Light Podcast. This is another episode of this podcast. And last week, we had the chance to interview our executive director. And this week, we are so blessed because we have with us para makakwentuhan natin ang Chairman President ng Couples for Christ, si Tito Joe Yamamoto. To my non-English speaking brothers and sisters, I will refer to Brother Joe as Tito Joe. And basically, Tito means uncle. So don't be confused. So we have with us, welcome, Tito Joe. Welcome po. Say hi to our brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to say a pleasant and a blessed day to all our brothers and sisters worldwide. Uh, this is really an opportune time to more to touch base with you and of course pleasant day to you Mac. Amen. It's good to be with you. Oh nga, it's good to be with you Tito. Before we go to the topic na about being the light no. I think it's very important for our brothers and sisters to know and understand sino ba si Brother Joe Yamamoto? Sino ba si Dr. Joe Yamamoto? Maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Po. Yeah, okay. So I'll take this uh, kind of short uh, but sweet no. Well, I am a physician uh, mm-hmm. by profession mm-hmm. and uh, I'm a surgeon by, by, uh, by my specialization. I'm married to Mila, my wife, who's a cardiologist, and we have three children who are all doctors. And uh, uh, what I do is really doing heart surgery. And so in so many ways, it's really my uh, good fortune to be a good uh, heart surgeon, but at the same time, uh, to be in the process of mending hearts and touching hearts of people. Bob, that's a very interesting way to put it, Tito. Papuntahan lang natin yung Tito, no? I think that's very interesting. How did you and Tita Mila meet pala? Yeah, it, well, it's as, as simple as we were classmates in medical school. <laughs> we were not drawn particularly close, but uh, somewhere along the course of our medical school, we, we became good friends and then we fell in love with one another. Mm-hmm. And uh, as she would relate, if you ask her, you know, uh, there were times when we would share lockers in medical in the in the hospital, mm. you know. And when we share lockers, I would always love, you know, I always love to leave small notes, sweet nothings, you know, candy, rose, you know, those, those things that uh, th- those things that uh, nurtured us during our uh, re- it was our residency days, and you know, those small things meant so much that you know drew us close and something that uh, built up our memories. So, tito, sin- sino unang nagagusto sa inyong dalawa? Sino? Sino unang nagagusto? Ano mo, hindi ko, ma- hindi ko ma- maalala. But uh, uh, I would say, you know, I, I, I probably say you know, that uh, I, you know, her simplicity was the oh. one that drew my attention to her. And of course, the feeling was pala mutual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yun, yun, yun yung guwapo. How, how did you start with Couples for Christ? No? Ah, Okay. Well, I came back from, uh, from my uh, heart surgery training in the U.S. in 1985. Mm-hmm. I happened to be invited by a good friend of mine who is a plastic surgeon. and Another one is a female gynecologist obstetrician. We would stumble each other in the operating room. And they would always make an invitation. I always uh, plug in for Coppers for Christ. Yeah, of course, nice. I've heard about Coppers for Christ, but it was something in passing. So I just uh, did not pay too much attention to that. But uh, somehow, every, almost every week, you know, when I would have a case, I would see them and they would always make that uh, familiar uh, appeal. Invitation. So uh, eventually I said, well, okay, I'll, I'll, try, I'll give it a try and I will attend. Uh, of course, it was a preparatory to find a graceful exit, exit somewhere along the course of this Christian life mm. program. But little did I know that God was already shaping my own relationship with him because uh, well, at the time when I was actually re- preparing myself and my wife to exit from the Christian Life program, you know, I became convicted because the topic for that evening was repentance and faith. So obviously, Ooh. it has really a positive impact of reinforcing God's invitation to you. So that's where I came to uh, be part of Couples for Christ. And that was 39 years ago uh, in 1985. Ooh. It's about April at the time when we were invited in the Christian Life program. And uh, as, as the saying goes, you know, once you are caught in couples for Christ, you never thought of living couples for Christ. So is it difficult, Tito, to continue joining? I know that you're a surgeon, so you're very busy. Definitely, you have a lot of time that you're spending in the surgical suite yeah. or preparing for it. How difficult was it 
at the beginning or even until now to become a member, to be part or to serve in Couples for Christ? It was really a challenge. I mean, uh, hands down, I will not uh, diminish the reality that as a heart surgeon and uh, also teaching in the academy, mm -hmm. in the Department of Surgery in our university, it was really a challenge. So until and unless you start uh, moving into that yeah. direction where out of conviction, out of determination, and out also of the joy of uh, being in Couples for Christ, you really depend the, the household meeting. Because after finishing the Christian Life program, and when we were uh, invited into Corpus for Christ, we readily agreed to be in Corpus for Christ. And thereafter, we made a conscious effort, deliberate effort to really protect mm -hmm. the household meetings. And uh, I would say that God has been so good because there was only very few occasions that I missed, uh, was able to miss my household, household meeting. And to me, that is the lifeblood, really, of the community of Corpus for Christ. So you were really active at that time, the yes, yes, household. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, you know, I had many challenges in the course of my Christian, my, my Corpus for Christ days, uh, starting as a member, becoming a struggling household head, and so on and so forth. But in all of these things where I always pose a, a conditionality for uh, so service, ko, what happens is that God always appears and uh, in a way, uh, irons out the difficulties and makes it easy for me to go to the le next level of service. Wow. And, uh, that was 39 years ago. 39 years ago. Tito, if I may ask, no, deviating a little bit, since your surname is Yamamoto, maybe some of our brothers and sisters oh, yeah, yeah. do not know about this. Baka they're just noticing kasi you're known more as Joe Yam. So parang hindi na napapansin yung full na Yamamoto. Anong family history po ninyo? Yeah, actually, my grandfather, uh, he was the one, uh, you know, in Japanese from from Pukui Ken. And uh, so his story is very interesting because as a young man, he stowed away and finding mm. himself in Hawaii with his younger brother. They work in the Sugar Central there. And when the Americans uh, were expanding in the 1900s to the Philippines, they they were invited to join uh, the setting up of uh, Sugar Central in Negros. And that is how my grandfather took roots in Negros Occidental, mm. met my grandmother, and uh, the rest is history, as you would say. So, indeed, uh, the Yamamoto is uh, original from my grandfather. And my understanding was that my grandfather came from uh, his ancestry were ancient samurai clan. Wow. So that, that makes me the last samurai. <laughs> like the movie. <laughs> Joe Yamamoto, the last samurai. So going back to the topic at hand, Tito, we are talking about this year for Couples for Christ, it's servant and light. Yes. It's very interesting to think that those two things were put together. How do we define then yung, the idea of being a light? Yeah, actually, I, I'd like to take it on from the point of view of servant. You know? mm. First of all, as a servant, you are really nothing. You, you, you amount to nothing. You are in the scheme of things. You are the smallest. You are the least. But to be able to quote from the scriptures, be a servant in the light to the nation, that is really claiming God's providence. Imagine mm. a servant and it become a light to the nation. It simply said that you are able to tap on to that unique relationship with the Lord that as a light of the nation and defining how you are a light and what you are a light, then you, you provide illumination. And what does illumination give you? It is a clear path by which you follow, mm -hmm. uh, gives you visibility, allows you to appreciate everything and everyone about, around you. But in, in the context of our own life in mission in Corpus for Christ, being a light is really to be, to be inspiring and to be witnesses to the mm. kind of personal relationship that uh, we have in, in Christ. Because without, uh, without that kind of witnessing, it's all empty. I mean, you know, you cannot ascribe being a light by yourself unless yeah. you reflect the light of Christ. Amen, Tito. So does it mean, Tito, na talagang it really is, you should really be steeped in prayer, no? Amen. Tama, no? Before you can become a servant and a light, you have to be very much steeped in prayer. That, that really goes back, you know, if I will probably relate back to my 39 years in Corpus for Christ. There were many ups and downs. There were mm -hmm. many struggles. But at the end of the day, it was also preparing you to a deepening of your spiritual life, prayer ah, life, yes. and scriptural life. And uh, that is really how you can grow into being reflective of the light of Christ. Again, even at this point in time, I cannot lay claim to the fact that I am the light. No, 
Uh, it's just merely being able to tap onto the light of Christ as a reflectorized uh, source of light coming from Jesus. When I give a spiel on what it means to be a light, it's something like a polished, polished uh, mirror or mm. a polished uh, brass surface. In, brass. In, in, the, in the ancient times, the the mirror were not glass but really made up of brass. Mm -hmm. You have to really polish that, and the way to polish that is being aligned with God. You have your prayer life that is really actually nurtured and conditioned and really uh, brought to a sheen. Mm -hmm. And that is when, you know, you have a refined life. That is the only time that when the light of Christ, when the light of God shines, you are able to reflect the light. Amen. Very magandang ano po yun. Tito, I'm very interested with this. Since you have a very busy schedule, even before, how, paano nyo nasisingit? How do you put prayer into your schedule? You know, it is a question that I have not really been able to adequately or mm. satisfactorily answer. But at any given point in time, in my 39 years in Couples for Christ, balancing professional life, family life, being husband to my wife Mila, and every other commitments to society, to our surgical, to our sure. surgical mm. specialty, you know, I always come to the same kind of answer and conclusion that it is. I was am able to serve and I'm able to make myself available only by the grace of God. Amen. That's the only answer that I have. Because if I look back, there's just no way that I can accommodate all of those. With all your schedule. schedule yes. no? With all your schedule. And uh, still be able to meet all the requirements, be able to, uh, you know, to put up what they need to uh, grow the family mm. and maintain the family. It's only by the grace of God. And God has been so good and so gracious because we have three children and all of them turn out to be doctors. Not wow. one of them were actually compelled to become a doctor. I think they followed the footsteps because they see in us some sort of inspiration to, you know, to guide them into their future uh, selection of vocation. Amen po. With going back to your history, throughout your entire life, or not just in Gopal's Fair Christ, but even your personal life, who are the people who served as an example of being a light? Uh, siguro as to being a light, it's, it's my first sources of light were really my parents. Mm -hmm. You know, my father who was not really particularly spiritual, but he would always uh, guide his life with principles that he learned from his uh, father also. And being a Japanese, yung aking grandfather, he was very stoic. And he, he, mm -hmm. he does not mean so many words, he does not speak so much word, my, my father, but he would always spe spell it out very clearly. And the only time that I drew close to my father was when in, I was in high school and we would be able to trade stories. And the stories that he loves to share with us was in his youthful years, growing mm. up in, in, in Negros. Negros, and especially their experience of, you know, during the war. Mm. And I would always love and, uh, you know, always fancy myself listening to him every single time he speaks about it. I'm always glued to him and tuned in. And so my father is uh, always, would always advise me as uh, my own source of light is that if you have a problem always make make, make it a mindful to to tap on in by your prayers he was not particularly prayerful and yet he would always value prayers at the same time stood stand your ground and always uh, always believe in yourself that you are provided for and guided and then of course my biggest uh, source of uh, being the light in my life is was really my mother mm. and i remember one conversation that i had when I was about, siguro, grade 3 or grade mm. 4. And my mother would say, What would you like to be pagdating paglaki mo? Sabi ko, Nay, I would like to become a doctor. Ah, sabi niya, Oh, yung ganda yan. Sabi niya, When I'm old, please take care of me. Aww. And I realized that it was a prophetic. Kasi when, when up to the last days of my mother's life, you know, I took care of her. So they were my sources. And now as I grew into my professional life, of course, uh, my mentors in the medical school, my mentors in the surgical world, but my biggest influence is really Mila, the light of uh -huh. my life. <laughs> what are the things that you think could be preventing someone from being a light? You know, if I draw back to my, to my own analogy, you know, mm -hmm. the metaphor of the polished, polished glass or the polished brass, mm -hmm. flat screen of the brass, the only time that you will not be able to reflect the light, always keeping in mind that we are not the source of the light. It's when mm. there are smudges into it. So think about if our prayer of life is not in order, then you cease to become a source of light. When our light is not in order with uh, God's plan for you, you will not 
be able to reflect the light of Christ. And so that is always a reminder that there will be days when you don't feel like you're a source of light or receiving the light of God. That is always a reminder. Like my first household head would always tell me, what is your prayer life? How is your scripture life? That is when we tap onto the, to the, the light of Christ. To the, you know, to the ever uh, present uh, source of God's uh, anointing and God's uh, guidance for us. His word and your prayer life. Amen. Amen, Tito. So, to my dear brothers and sisters, no, this is just a disclaimer, not really a disclaimer, but to put it into context, I don't think it would be a stretch to, for this next question lang naman to, I don't think it would be a stretch to say that Tito Joe is one of the best heart surgeons in the country. So, this question, Tito, I think I, I really need to ask this. How do you prevent na it's your light na makita instead of light ni Jesus? How do you make sure that at the end of the day, it will always be the light of Christ that you can show to your Your professional reputation will, will grow over time. Mm. But I realized that in the course of that, it's how you conduct yourself. And my first struggle was really making sure that Joe Yamamoto, the surgeon in the operating room, once upon a time, I was actually labeled as a <laughs> you know. Uh, I, I remember kaya, kaya it gave that rise to that impression was that one time I was really uh, so frustrated with my scrub nurse because she gave mm. she always gave me the wrong instrument. So I ended up, you know, throwing my instruments in the, on the floor, on the operating room floor, only to discover that the one that I threw was one of my most expensive surgical instruments. <laughs> and I said, no, never again. But subconsciously, I realized that God is speaking to me. Joe Yamamoto, you cannot be a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde. Mm. You should be couples for Christ in the operating room and in your home and in your classroom and in your professional life. That was really like uh, being doused with cold water that God reminded me, you have to be authentic inside and out. And that was really, that was really something that I really value and relate as one of those uh, unique experiences that made me realize that you have to be who you are and uh, be aligned with God's plan. And uh, the other thing that helped me, uh, you know, in terms of my professional life was, uh, especially when I was placed on an uncomfortable position when a patient, when I was making rounds with one of the major hospitals. I will not mention anymore the hospital. And she had a major uh, cardiovascular problem. And then she said, Dr. Joe, can you do me a favor? Can you pray over me? You know, I remember being put on the spot. My sweat was already starting to form Take beads on my forehead. But I cannot let down my patient who is yeah. actually urging me to pray over her. So what I did was the path of least resistance. So I closed my eyes and I prayed, not minding what the resident, surgical residents or the nurses would speak about me. But again, that was actually one of those... Uh, events that uh, really convicted me that if we are to be witnesses to the faith, when a pray, patient uh, asks you to pray over her, that is an opportunity to proclaim that you are a servant of God. And that, that was actually, after that, it, becomes, it became natural for me to pray over my patient, whether they ask me or not. I volunteer. Amen. Oh, talaga, Tito. <laughs> talaga po. Really? Was that patient was she a cfc member or no no she was not a cfc oh. member but you know i think one of those uh, conversations with her that i think i made mention that i was couples for christ mm. so that's that's you what you never know when when people will be you know asking you if you're couples for christ they better see couples for christ in you or not amen. <laughs> you're in trouble <laughs> amen dito i think that's a very good point so as a chairman president no how do you envision Couples for Christ as a community na would be a light to others. I, I think it's it's really exciting to think about couples for Christ no, as an army. I always liken couples for Christ, uh, you know, in spread over many countries around the world in all the provinces of the Philippines. That the only way that you can be a light to the nations is that really you have to really claim that mm. you are a disciple and a believer in Christ. And the only way that you can also make that as a reality is when people see Christ in you. By words, by example, by your mannerism, by, by, your, uh, you know, by your own uh, way of talking and uh, probably dealing with people. 
Uh, that's the only way. And you know, can you imagine one couple at a time, mm. one family at a time, then one mm. community yeah. at a the time. Then before you know it, it would really be changing the way people, uh, one parish at a time. You know, these are the ways that you can uh, make sure that uh, the movement will grow. But more than growing the movement is really growing our own conviction that uh, we are to be disciples and apostles of Christ. And that's the only way. As a chairman, I look at it at that way, that uh, our journey in life, our journey in community would have already empowered us, already enabled us, and uh, we have already imbibed so-called the, the culture and, uh, of, of Corpus for Christ, and such that uh, when, you know, in, in Corpus for Christ, we, we are excited to be called not only disciples, but also as missionary disciples. Amen. You know, I learned that in our last in, uh, ILC, yes. you know, missionary <laughs> disciples. And uh, no less than Pope Francis actually defined that very clearly for us. And so, as the chairman president, I see that as a way of moving forward and moving, you know, expanding to many more areas. And despite the fact that we have been in Corpus for Christ for 43 years, there are still many more things that we can offer. And what is really, of course, exciting is that we are actually being able to connect to many parishes and dioceses. And even our dear bishops and priests realize that they have in Corpus for Christ leaders and members alike as uh, yeah. you know, partners in the mission. Amen, Dito. I would like to, because we were talking about your professional life and the CFC. When you were as a, you were a leader in Couples for Christ, was there a time, were there times that you felt na parang hindi ako nagiging light sa mga kapatid ko? Or were there moments that you felt that your light was not that bright or the light in Christ in you was not that bright or it was... Uh, yeah, there, there were, of course, occasions. Not too many occasions, but uh, there were occasions that, you know, there, there are challenges and difficulties in mm -hmm. life that, uh, you know, you ask yourself, is this the reason why I have problems because I'm not showing the light of Christ or, you know, is my life not aligned? But God gives mm -hmm. you all those challenges and difficulties so that at the end of any conversation, at the end of your dialogue with God in your prayer time, you know, you realize that God is giving you the problem so that you will mature and you will mm -hmm. deepen your relationship with Him. Challenges and difficulties are given for you not to be surprised that God is giving you tests, but rather these are opportunities for you to grow spiritually and mature even more as Christians and as couples for Christ. Amen, Tito. So, in your entirety, 39 years, tama po. 39 years in CFC. What do you think would, what could you say would be your favorite service na ginawa ninyo for the community? For the community, I like, uh, like others would say, you know, I remember when I was new in Couples for Christ. And, uh, you know, I was not giving any talks yet. Mm. Um, at the time, you know, it was more than satisfying to be able to, you know, arrange these chairs, sweep the floor. And uh, during the time na meron kaming mga outdoor activities in Corpus for Christ, yung sinasabi nga ni Arnel yun, nagtatakal ka ng kanin para mibigay mo sa, sa mga kapwa mo Corpus for Christ. And we were not mindful. We were not actually conscious uh, you know, mm. of ranks, no? but uh, as, uh, you know, as uh, all servants. But one of my most memorable chapter in my uh, life in Corpus for Christ was uh, to be to, to form the surgical missions of Corpus wow. Christ, of which from 1997 up until now, no, nanantala lang ng kwa ng pandemic. But but we have been in over 100 surgical missions across the country, and we have taken care of thousands of patients. Those were actually to us not only moments of service, and thinking that we have uh, rendered service in the poorest of the poor in the least uh, served uh, uh, provinces, provinces in the Philippines. Yes. But at the same time, it was also a good occasion to witness. Because you interact with non-CFC, but also you know, to deepen your friendship with CFC in the provinces, leaders and members. Uh, for the surgical mission, na, missionaries, I call them missionaries, you know, doctors and nurses, it's a good way of witnessing. It's a good way also of mentoring young mm. doctors. Because we would have young doctors. And it's a good, unique opportunity to mentor all of them. And so by your, by your demeanor, by your example, by your dedication, your selflessness, your almost inexhaustible service, mm. uh, you know, they will always be inspired by that. And uh, I remember when we had an occasion where we partnered with a, a surgical group uh, from the United States, you know, 
And this was already past midnight. And our surgical team, despite the fact that we were having, you know, technical difficulties in the case, you know, would always find it occasion to, to sing. <laughs> Most of them are couples for Christ songs. And then, you know, we were asked by an American nurse, is this really you or are you just putting it on to be, to be laughing and happy when even it's past midnight? Mm. Well, that, that's our natural thing. And said, you know, they started thinking that this is what Popos for Christ does to these people. Tireless and yet happy. Amen. And we can see that, Tito, the, that your tirelessness, knowing your story and how often, like, you know, when we encounter each other, if, if I know that you're traveling, lagi ko sinasabi sa inyo, nakatira na naman kayo sa maleta nyo. You live in your <laughs> luggage. <laughs> and I'm sure that... Life in the luggage. Life, life from the luggage, actually. And definitely, I know it must, it must be taxing on you. But personally, I honor you, Tito, for continuously doing that and continuously serving throughout these years in Couples for Guys. I'm, I'm not sure of your challenges. Alam ko may ibang realities. But personally, I honor you for the work that you've been doing for Couples for Christ. For being a father for Couples for Christ din talaga. So, Tito, I would like to know, no, uh, how do you go back to that idea that you are, you need to brighten that light again? Pag nagdidim na ulit yung ilaw sa inyo, how yeah, do you brighten I, that? I, I would probably put that in the context ng, because one of my more familiar challenging environment is in the operating room. You mm. know, this was way back when I was new in Corpus for Christ. When I encounter difficulties, when I encounter difficulties in the surgical in the surgical field, in the surgical suite. And uh, for example, you know, you have a patient that is, you know, is uh, critical. You know, you always find time to pause mm -hmm. and offer a prayer and ask for God's guidance. And that's the only way. In inevitably, God is always going to get me out of a tight spot. And, uh, you know, I really thank the Lord and glorify the Lord. For, for example, for those CFC members who have had the occasion to be operated on by me for heart, I would always tell if the, if the patient is a husband, and I tell the wife when after a successful operation. operation, I tell them, you know, when I opened your husband's heart, I saw your name. <laughs> Although it's a, it, it's a little on the joking side, but I saw your name. But you know what's more important? I saw the logo of Corpus for Christ on top of your husband's nice. heart. That really catches them in. It brings that them is, comfort and joy. It gives them comfort to say that, you know, uh, we are a community, whether, you know, you're talking about the household meeting, CLPs, or community gatherings, but also in the personal challenging circumstance of an operating room, you take the time, uh, you know, to share with them God's, God's greatness, even, even in the operating room. Yeah. Tito, how about our, bro our brothers and sisters who feel that it's, Challenging to serve, challenging to be a light to others, or basically it's a challenge for them to reflect the light of the Lord. What would be your message to our dear my, brothers my and sisters? My message and my advice to them, this is not about you. Mm. This is not about your smallness or your greatness or your success or your failures. It's not even the simplicity of your life or, for example, the complexity, not even your matters of temporal you know, belongings and mm. everything. But this is really about acknowledging that you are where you are that you are so blessed. Every time you find yourself dry, always consider it an occasion to thank the Lord and also to count yourself blessed. You are blessed because you have the blessings, of course. You are blessed because you have challenges. You are blessed because you know you are rich in experience with the Lord, but you are also blessed because you are dry in the Lord. I always, rem I always remember what my household head before would say, every time you experience spiritual dryness, be ready because God is preparing you for a greater service. It never failed. Amen. And for those who are encountering Tito, yung mga tao that feel na hindi sila nagiging light to others, what would be your advice to our brothers and sisters who minister to our brothers and sisters na nagdidim din yung ilaw? I think the most important thing is you always go back to the fundamentals. Something that I learned early on because the first one-on-one uh, -on -one that I had with my household head, was before I was even had the opportunity to take my seat, he was already asking me, how's your prayer life? <laughs> that is really fundamental. Yeah. And, you know, again, I was put in an uncomfortable position. As a surgeon, I do not want to see myself in an uncomfortable position. But that was one time I was unprepared for the question. 
But the next time around, when I had already more or less set my prayer time, I was ready. When he called me for the next one-on-one, -on -one, he asked me, not my prayer time anymore, he asked me, how is your scripture reading time? <laughs> that caught me again. <laughs> but again, this is really my advice. Make sure that your spiritual foundations are very, very strong and consistent and regular, but at the same time, always tap on to the to the, to the Holy Mass, to the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. These are your sources of strength. And of course, our prayer life is also enriched by our rosary life. No Amen. problem uh, that uh, you encounter that cannot be solved by prayer and uh, scripture as well as the rosary. Salamat, maraming maraming salamat. Thank you so much, Tito Joe, for sharing your insights. And not just your insights, no, but your life. From even the details about your life, you were very open to sharing it. And once again, very, very grateful to have you us to have you with us ngayong araw na to. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you so much. So, brothers and sisters, that ends another episode of the CFC Servant in Light podcast. Maraming maraming salamat for joining us. Continue to share this to our brothers and sisters or to anyone you feel who would need this. And once again, I'm Mac Quinto and we have our guest Tito Joe Yamamoto. Thank you so much for joining us. And tara mga kapatid, see you next week. Kwentuhan tayo. God bless.